Hey guys, so this is more of a general Unreal tutorial again, because a lot of people have asked on how to actually debug and there are millions of ways and I'm by no mean an expert on this, but I prepared some little examples here and I just wanted to go through them with you together so I can show you what I'm doing in general when something is not working. So in this example, you can see the first time I touch the screen, everything works as expected. So I'm going to open up the blueprint and as you can see, nothing is really in there except for the visuals. So the thing we are looking for is most likely in the parent object. So going to open this up and have a quick check. And here's an event called key pressed. And since the error has something to do with pressing keys, this would be a great way to actually start. So once I identified the place where I want to start looking, I select the first node and press the F9 key. So this is to actually toggle a breakpoint. And now if I hit play, this is actually the first tip because this is not really mentioned in the documentation. If you hit play now, actually nothing will happen because I haven't triggered the event on that exact keyboard. So I have a lot of keyboards in there and this breakpoint only works for one of them. So in the case of this keyboard, I really need to select this one keyboard so the breakpoint knows what to do. So here's a list with all the keyboards I have in the scene. And I can, of course, go and search for the name of it. But I can also, if it is selected, you can see this little selected node here. And you know exactly this is the keyboard we are actually working with. And one thing that is also very cool in visual scripting is if I have this selected and I simulate now. Normally, I would do this on my other screen. But if I hit the play button now, you can really see how the code is flowing and what is executing and what is not executing. So this is also a great way to get a first idea of what is actually happening and where does the code stop working. So you can see the first time everything was triggered. So all of this is working perfectly fine. But if I try this again, nothing happens. So we can already see this first event is not being triggered at all, the key pressed event. So something in there must be wrong. And let's set the breakpoint again, because I also wanted to show you um, what to do with the breakpoints. I personally really like working with them, but it really depends on, on your style. Ansgar is not really using them that much. The cool thing about breakpoint is you can play until the breakpoint triggers and then the game stops. So you're completely frozen and now you can inspect everything. So you stop at exactly this frame. You have all the values in there and you can exactly see what is happening. We can um, go to the next frame and really cycle through everything step by step to see how the code is flowing, where it is going, what information is there. And this is a great way to actually see what your application is doing there. So right now I'm in a loop here and I can step out of this loop with the step out function or cycle through them frame by frame. But in this keyboard I have just tested, I have over 20 different keys. So this will now execute 20 times until it actually has finished this loop and then it will continue. So I can actually set different breakpoints or use the step over function to step over uh, some specific keys. But all of this is working here. Shift was not pressed, so it goes to the next sequence and actually looks if the interface was implemented and if so, we press the key. So this is working ex as expected, but we already have seen this in the code flow previous. I just wanted to show you that you have the possibility to go in there and check all the variables and what is in there. So now we know something has to do with the key pressed event and we see that this event is coming from the component keys. 
So we are opening this up and search for where the event is actually being called. So this is here. And from there, we just go backwards and see if there's something actually stopping the code to flow. So the sound is doing nothing. Ramble mechanics most likely also not. Um, set in a vector parameter also not. But here, here's a boolean and a branch. And this will only execute if this temporary block is set to false. So maybe it is not set to false. And we can test this very easy with a print string function. And the print string function, I'm going to talk about this later again, but this is also really great for debugging. And you can also, if you um, have a branch, it's always good, even if the true or false should never execute, do a print string in there and print something like this should never be printed. In this case, if it is printed, you exactly know where to search for. So let's try it out. You can see first time it's working, but now the already blocked event is triggering. So the event is triggering, everything is working fine, but we're getting the wrong branch here. So we need to watch this value. Right click, find references. We'll find all the references of this node in this blueprint. And here we can see we have one get. This is this one here. And we have two set there. So we're setting this to true. And this is the event we were caught in previously. This was here. So here, this block for duration is being triggered on the keys. And this bool is set to true. And there's a delay. But then you can see it's set again, but this is not connected. So this will never be set to false. Just to check, we um, print this little magnifier class so we can check all blueprints, not just the one we are currently in. And I'm also going to show you this feature later on in more detail. But now everything is working again like it should. For the next example, let's have a look at the glow color. So this is the color. If something is hitting the keys, you can see this glow around the keys. Well, normally you should see them. Right now it's not working. And we have set the glow color to bright orange. So we actually should be able to see them very good. Let's find out why it's not working. First things first, let's open the blueprint again. And here on the right side, we can already see this ripple glow color and it's in the category visual. We cannot search it here, so we're going to search it down here. And we will not be able to find it in this blueprint. So most likely it is in the parent blueprint again. We open this up and if we search for the name of the variable in here, we can see, okay, there is a variable called ripple glow color and it's also in the visual category as we have seen, and we can find that reference in the event graph. There is one that is called ripple glow color. And here we can see that this was just not connected. So it's always a very good idea to search for the name of the variable that is not working and really try to find a place where it is being used in the code. And you will actually be able to very fast find the exact place where this variable is being used. Okay, in the next example I have prepared, all of the optical stuff is working fine, but the sound is actually not triggering. So we can open up the pawn to see if it is in the drumsticks, the sound. But if we search for sound in there, you can see there are no results. So most likely the sound is not in there. If we press this magnifier class, we can search in all blueprints at once. So now we have all the blueprints and there is a play sound function in the key. So this sounds very promising. And here you can see the connection has been disconnected and we were able to find this spot in a matter of seconds. So now everything is 
up and running again. So now the sound is working, the glow is working, but the keys are not scaling anymore once I touch them. So this time I'm also going to use the find in blueprint function. That's the same if we press on this magnifier class window. Here we can search through all the blueprints and we know that we want to search for scaling and for keys. And if we put these keywords in there, you can see there's a function called scale buttons. And in there is our set relative scale 3D. All of them are connected this time. And if we want to set a breakpoint, we would need to actually select the key we are going to press. And as you can see, I have really a lot of keys in there. So this will not really be feasible in this case. Of course, you could do a demo map with just one key to really test things out. And this is also a very great example for debugging. Make it as simple as possible and just test the things you really want to test without having all the other stuff you need to um, look out for. So in this case, I'm just going to use my print string function because this will always print a string and I get the information directly on screen. And first of all, I want to check the X and the Y values. So I'm going to connect them in a print, a print string function. And now if I hit play, I can exactly see what values are actually in there. And maybe they are zero. So this would um, explain why nothing is working, but they are one but they stay one. So nothing is going um, bigger or smaller here. And we need to find out what is going on there. So actually the X and Y is working. Maybe the counter is not working. So the counter should count up if we uh, hit the key for a matter of a couple of milliseconds. So let's put this in the print string function and try to see what values are in there. And you can see this is counting up to around two milliseconds. So this is also not a problem and there's not much left in there. So the last thing we can check is the node itself. We have still one input, it's the scaling curve. So since all the other values are working fine, it needs to be in the scale curve. We can open this up here on the right side. And here you can see actually all three values are at one, so nothing will actually scale. And if we select the middle one here and really crank the value up to something crazy like maybe five, so this would, will not look beautiful, just so you can better see it's actually working again. At least I hope it is. And now if I hit a key, you can see it's getting really big, like a big glowing cookie. For the last example, I actually wanted to show you something that is um, quite specific, but actually what are you doing if nothing is working at all, like in this example here? And this happens quite often. So you can see, well, it's working for some of the buttons and it's also working for the other keyboard here. But this one here is actually not doing anything at all, at least the small buttons. the rest is working perfectly fine but something is going on with the small buttons here and in a lot of cases this has something to do with the player collision so also if you're playing around with uh, with physics and unreal collisions are always a very big um, thing you need to consider if something is not working the way it should be so if we open the mesh itself up and actually display the simple collision because this is the one we we are using most of the time by default. You can see nothing is in there 
And as soon as we add a simple collision, all of them are visible again. And now if I hit simulate, and also one cool thing is you can simulate in these different um, visualization modes. So this is also very cool for debug uh, debugging purposes. You can see they are now reacting, the sound is playing, and yeah, everything is working again like it should. Okay, so these are some of the techniques I'm using and I am really interested on things you are doing to debug. Let us know in the comments or on Discord and I will make sure to add them in the next video. Also, I quickly wanted to show you how you can use this in the advanced VR framework because this is a very complex um, framework, as you may know. And for example, if we want to set our controller mesh, we can just use the search and blueprint function and get directly to, to the event this is actually happening. So it's a very fast way. And most of the time, if I um, get a question on Discord, the first thing I'm going to do is typing this exact question in there. For example, if someone asks, how can I change the laser color? I'm going to type in laser color and I can see, okay, we have in the, for example, teleport our set laser color function. And here I can see, ah, okay, if it is hovering non, we have this red color. And if it is hovering a selectable, we have this green color and I can change it in here. So I don't really need to know where all of those events are. For example, if I want to change something with the sound, the teleport sound, I type in teleport and sound and I get to the very exact position this is actually being triggered. And in this way, I'm very effective and very fast and I am able to help myself find the places instead of uh, going through all the code, trying to understand what is happening here or being forced to ask um, other developers to help them. So if you're spending some time learning how to um, debug your code or the code from other people, it will really benefit you in the future. And the cool thing is you can also search not only for um, events, but also for variable names or comments. And I'm using this a lot. For example, if I have something on my to-do list, I'm doing a comment to do and fix this later on. So thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.